Hi, I'm um, Oliver Quinlan. I'm a lecturer in education in primary at uh, Plymouth University. I just started doing that in September, but last year I was teaching in a year four class. So what I wanted to share with you today is not so much to sort of show you how to use any of these tools, but just share a bit of a story of, of how we started using them in our, our year four class, which was with um, eight-year-olds at a school in Birmingham. So I'm going to take you through why we started using Google Sites, um, what the children actually did with it, show you some examples of stuff they've done, and, um, and how I kind of approached this and, and how I actually got them doing this kind of stuff. So, first of all, why did we start using Google Sites? Well, it was really a practical reason for me, basically, that I started using Google Sites. I wanted to have a class homepage. I had um, 30 netbooks in my class and various iPads and things like that. We had loads of IT and we needed a way to bring it all together. When we did a lesson, the kids needed to be able to get to, just move this slightly, um, the kids needed to be able to get to what I wanted them to do quite easily. And I thought the best way for this is to buy a domain name, 4OQ, that was the name of our class, .co.uk, and set up a Google site on it. Now originally, I did this as a website with iWeb on the Mac, which looks great, um, but we couldn't, Thanks, okay. Um, we couldn't um, change it in school because I couldn't access FTP settings and all sorts of things like that and I had to have my own computer to do it. Whereas with Google Sites, if I wanted to um, change something on here, if I had a new lesson, I can just click on edit and I could change what was on the class homepage. So if I was a bit behind and I had to set up my lesson at lunchtime for the afternoon, I could just click edit, stick it on there, the kids could go to the website, they could access all of these resources. It's brilliant. So it's, it's a little bit like a wiki, really, really easily um, editable, and you can put stuff on there. So this was the main site, and this started growing and growing as I put more lessons in here. As you can see on the right, we've got, uh, sorry, on your left, we've got different subjects and, um, and so on. But this all happened within a class where we were really trying to work on independent learning. So we originally had a whole hour at the start of every day where children could work on independent projects. Now, drop eight-year-olds into a whole hour in school where they can spend their time doing whatever they want, and you might have a bit of a disaster waiting to happen. So we had to work really hard on giving them structures to help them to choose things that they could do that would be actually valuable uses of their time. And I set up this independent ideas page. So when they came in in the morning, this would be on the board and some of them would come and look at this and some of the ideas would be things offline that they could do, um, artwork, things that had nothing to do with computers. So they'd come in and just like lots of people would do with morning work on a whiteboard, they could look at them. But some of the things, try that now, okay. Some of the, um, still going I think, some of the things that were, were on there actually were online resources, so I had links to them. So some children would come in, they wouldn't even bother looking at the whiteboard, they'd go and log on to a computer and then follow the links through to do the things um, that they wanted to do. And if a child came up with an idea for independent work that was a really good idea that I hadn't thought of, I could just click edit, stick it on there, and other children could benefit from that idea and, and start using it as well. So basically, we started using it practically for me as a teacher. But what happened was the kids saw me clicking edit on this site on the board, and they said, hang on a minute, it's really cool that we've got our own class website, but can't we have our own website to put our own independent stuff on um, that we want to? So what they did was um, they started creating their own sites, and we did this over a Google Apps for Education set up. Um, we'd already used Google Docs quite a lot for their writing work, so they got very used to they got very used to um, signing in to using Google Docs to access their documents at home and at school. Um, they got used to sharing with each other so they could comment on each other's work, and. Um, one day, I had them doing some poetry. They all, is that me whistling? No. Um, they, they were all working on poetry, and uh, they all wrote different kinds of poems. And towards the end of the lesson, a group of three girls kind of had an idea, and they went around whispering in some of the children's ears. And um, what they'd done is they had told all of the children to share their poems with them, and these girls had collated them together into a year four poetry website. Um, which we could then share, not just with other people in the class, but with the whole world. 
Um, they went through and they categorized them. So um, they sorted them into the themes of the poems, what types of poems they were. We've got Kennings on there. We had Sinquains. Some of the um, most sort of switched on girls in the class and boys got into doing Sinquains. And they felt that they ought to explain what a Sinquain was for the children who were reading it who didn't know. So we had this whole kind of um, website that was basically like a crowdsourced poetry website that, that these children had created. And they'd done that off their own back, really. And they were really excited that we could publish that on the web. It could get on Google. If you Google CKS Poetry, which is the f initials of the three girls, C, K, and S, um, that's the first thing you get. So they go home and tell Grandma to Google CKS Poetry, and Grandma goes and learns what a Sinquain poem is. So they then kind of all got really inspired by uh, this idea of doing, doing websites. And we had all sorts of ones pop up. Birmingham City Football News website, um, which uh, a couple of boys started working on to, to share their passion. And um, they, as you can see down the side, those are all the different, um, different pages. So they got really in depth with sharing an awful lot of stuff. And they were updating this match by match as well as to where Birmingham was in the league. But then, of course, what had to happen was some people didn't like Birmingham City news. So we get Chelsea news as well. And we got Arsenal news and all manner of different websites. But what was really lovely is that they all kind of linked to each other's. So anyone who was sort of really into the internet about seven or eight years ago you used to have these web rings where people who made websites would kind of get into these rings where they all were on the same theme. They almost made one of those because they wanted to share with each other the stuff they'd done with, um, with their football things. Now, bear in mind, I never really showed them how to do this other than I said, Google Sites lives here, sites.robinhoodschool.co.uk, and, and then they just kind of got on with it. So just like the kids who were, who were saying earlier, it's really easy, but what's great about that is it becomes not so much about the technology anymore. What it's about is actually sharing the learning and actually writing and doing all of the content. And actually, Google Sites is great for this. My partner teacher used um, various other websites, which were kind of flash-based, and kids could make their own websites that were very, very whizzy, all sorts of page-turning effects and fire going on and flash animations. But they spent all the time on the flash animations, and they didn't spend much time on the content. Google Sites looks smart enough, but it doesn't, it's not too whizzy, so you concentrate on the content. And I think that's a really important thing to think about with some of these tools. We had some other wonderful ones. We had History Web. Now, a couple of boys really, really into their history. And um, they did, this is actually a Google presentation that they did, and they embedded in the website to share the work that, that they had done. This was about four boys collaborating on this one. And um, it was really great. And this one prompted a really interesting conversation about how can we get this to be Googleable? Because they called it history in your hands. Well, if you Google history in your hands, our website doesn't come up first. So we started thinking about how can we change the name of it? How can we put keywords in there so that when I tell my friends about it, they'll Google it and find it? I also had really reluctant writers writing pages and pages of tips about how to use the game Bin Weevils and how to get the most out of it without having to ask your parents to pay for a subscription. So really pointing the kids to all the hidden content that, that they could find, which was, was really great. And we had a wonderful story of some boys who created a whole series of sentence writing videos, how to write cool sentences, and posted them um, one every week up onto their own website with instructions about how children could improve their writing um, using those sentence structures. Um, so at the end of the year, we did a whole website for the whole class reflecting on year four. And they wrote pages and pages of stuff about what they'd enjoyed. And each child had a page, and they could all go in and look at what things they had learned um, throughout the year. So that was what they did. What I've been analyzing more recently is, is how did that happen? Because it was a very kind of serendipitous story that kind of evolved. And I think being open to that kind of serendipity is really important for harnessing these tools for kids to be able to really let their interests fly and get really interested in their learning. One thing is modeling using the tools. If it's a useful tool, why aren't you using it as a teacher? We started using Google Sites because it was a useful tool for me to use as a class website. I could organize my class around this, and I could share my content on it. So I modeled using it. It wasn't some random thing that I'd found for them to use. I'm trying to work out where. 
I don't know where I should stand to stop that, but I'm nearly finished anyway. The other one, create a culture of using these kinds of tools and create a culture of sharing your interests. We had a culture of class blogging, so we were sharing stuff that we were doing in class all the time. And so when children did things, they'd be like, can we put this on the blog? Can we share this with the world? We had a culture of sharing with people. And so when they got into Google Sites, they wanted to share stuff they were doing with people at home and with people across the world. And the other thing is kind of let them own the tools a little bit. Let them come up with the ways that they, they want to use them. Google Docs, um, I really realized the potential of collaboration in that when children started using it to write a document and then send it to their friend, almost like a letter or an email. Now, to me, as somebody who put Google, to Google Docs in the word processing box in my ICT teacher mind, that seemed a bit, I didn't like it. You're supposed to use email for that, not docs, but actually it got them commenting on each other's work and it got them collaborating. And then when I realized that they loved the power of that, then I could harness that in my lessons and I could start letting them communicate with each other, um, comment on each other's work. And the same with Google Sites. When I realized they really wanted to share stuff, I realized all I had to do was choose something you're interested in and make an interesting website to make somebody else interested in it. And then away they go really. So message is really to try and create that kind of culture with these things. You don't have to be the expert with this um, as a teacher and uh, then you can, you can let them fly. Um, so feel free to come and have a chat to me or you can check out my blog. I've written loads of stuff about Google tools on there or find me on Twitter as well. Thank you.